summer series what we say is how close summer we ain't talking about degrees today is all about the beach because it's summer it's all about snacks because we love snacks but we do need to pick a bone we need to know if you call it charcuterie char char or charcuterie char I think that you can definitely say charcuterie and you can definitely say charcuterie you have to own it down up below yeah comment below get your shut up if you're sweating and I am I'm getting sweaty I need a drink yeah, let's talk about what we're drinking. So today we have some canned wine, of course, because we want to drink on the beach and we don't want to lug a bottle around. I am super excited about this because I really know very little about canned wine and I feel like it's perhaps a common misconception. I know it's kind of like trendy and all the rage, but I've always kind of like strayed away from it. I don't really know a whole lot about it and why it's canned. So that's why we have Taylor. Let me take it from here. I loved canned wine, especially in the summertime. One, it's Jeez. portable, it's not glass. A lot of places don't allow glass, therefore allows your canned wine. Two, it's sealed really, really well. So a lot of younger wines, a lot of bright, fruity, high acid wines, benefit from being sealed like this. Well, kind of like a screw cap, right? A spell enclosure. She's so smart. And one can is about two glasses. Talk about efficiency. That's what I like to hear. They've been around uh, about 15 years now. Crazy because it just seems like you're just seeing more and more and more. This one is a line by Brock Cellars. I love Brock Cellars. They're in Northern California. They do some really nice wines, but they do some higher price wines. Mostly higher price, I mean like 30 and up. And then their love line is their more affordable line. If you want to have nice quality wine Black and pay a limit less, they do a rosé, they do a chilled red, and they do a white. So the rosé that we're drinking today is from a grape called Val de Gay. Val de Gay. <laughs> Fun to say, Val de Gay. This grape was once known as the Gamay of Northern California mistakenly because it's so nice, light, and fruity, so it makes the perfect rosé. And then they mix in a little bit of Trousseau and Zinfandel to balance it out, and what you get is just a beautiful, fruity summer rosé. I love it. You could just drink it from the can. We have glasses because we're at home, but... I think it's going to... Oh, I did it. <laughs> Excellent choice. Without further ado, to you, Val de Gay, and to you, Ethan. Honestly, we say this every week, but summer in a glass. Everything we drink right now is summer in a glass. And when we switch seasons, you'll be the first to know. Because we know our seasons, okay? We're from Florida. All the leaves are brown, the leaves are brown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What does charcuterie mean? Well, you're in luck. It literally translates to cooked flesh. Oh. Then we gotta throw in the fromage. The charcuterie and the fromage. Boy, do we have some fromage for you. So I guess I'll start from the very beginning. When trying to prepare your perfect little party platter, what do we need to know? A variety is key. key here. Always want to make sure you place your items next to the things it's supposed to be paired with to give your guests the best experience possible. The perfect bite. You <laughs> want to always make sure to make it easy for them. Yes. <laughs> or foundational item. Obviously going to be your charcuterie, your fromage. Where do we start? What do we put down first? What do we want to do? I think we do the bowls first. They are anchors. We talk with our hands. We need you to see our hands. <laughs> we have some really delicious jam. Jackie's Jams made here in San Diego. This is a strawberry rhubarb jam. Two things that are in season. Delicious honeycomb. If you go somewhere and you see honeycomb on a cheese board, you just feel fancy. I've it's never strong. had a honeycomb. So just have normal honey, like peasants do. Uh, Next up, whole grain mustard. Super delicious, grainy, pops in your mouth. Mmm, mm, that's gonna so be good. good. So we have some pickled vegetables. Mm -hmm. That is gonna add some nice bright acidity. So it's gonna cut through anything creamy. We have quite a few creamy cheeses here. So honeycomb, again, very important. This is an acre. Yeah, the best. Smack down in the middle. Height is your friend. I want this near the raspberry jam. I already know 
that's gonna be a delicious combo. Yeah. So I just went ahead and chunked that up. Beautiful. And you wanna keep it tight. Get it right, get it tight. So I wanna push it right up against that. Mmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. With the mustard, we'll wanna kinda surround that with the meats. And we'll also want the pickles close to that too. Maybe we'll anchor the olives here. Now this gives us a kind of a nice pattern to weave around to make our stuffs. I got a really gorgeous cantaloupe. Usually everybody's like, ick cantaloupe. But when paired with prosciutto de parma. Not even, and also when it's in season, it's actually very juicy with a little bit of salt on it. So good. It'll change your mind. It's definitely underrated. When you're taking the prosciutto, you want to roll it. Typically we place fruit last, but because I have such large fruit, I'm going to put it right here. One thing that I think is a smart tip worth noting is place your board where you're going to serve it so that you can just sort of start to spill things over and it will be very artsy. All right, time to talk about the meat and the cheese. Let's talk about it. You always want to get an assortment of meats. We suggest starting with two and then building up from there. For the purpose of today, we did four because we're gluttonous. We have Sopressa, which is an uncured Italian salami, a little bit lighter, a little bit peppery. We have a dry copa, that is a salted and cured pork shoulder. Super delicious, a little bit more fatty. We have prosciutto, and we have mortadella, AKA Italian bologna. It's bologna how good it is, y'all. You know that I love desserts, and I would almost, almost trade dessert for mortadella. I would like to find, or maybe make, a sleeping blanket made of mortadella. That's Wait, my next fantasy. What? As long as it's mortadella. I don't care. Can you imagine? Just pull it. I pull it up and be like. Now, for our mortadella, I'm gonna just tear it a little bit before folding it because some people, not us, uh, might not want a huge mouthful. That's baloney. And you're basically using the edges of your containers and you wanna go right up against it and frame it, and that's what makes it look nice and super full. Eating things in between. You can't see, so it does not matter. This is where you can get really artsy. I'm an artist, I make meat boards. So some of these I like to just fold right in half. I'm feeling that this nice thin meat is gonna be really nice with the burrata. Lovely, lovely, lovely. All right, oh, fromage. All right, cheese. Always wanna have an array of cheeses too. Soft, semi-hard, blue and spanky, gooey and creamy. So we did some selfish cheeses today, which means we chose a cheese that we like. If you're having a party, play it safe. Buy a brie, buy a cheddar. People can get unnaturally offended by blue cheese. I'm not down with that, I love blue cheese. So we start with farmer's cheese. This is a really young, kind of unprocessed cheese. It's super creamy and it's a cow's milk cheese. So it doesn't quite have the bite of a goat's milk cheese and it's just a little bit firmer. It's so mild, it will go with anything. Can't wait to sink my teeth into that one. All right, what's next? The honey goat. Again, creamy, goaty. Get an array of goat's milk AMG. Goat, sheep, cow. It sounds like slam poetry. Goat, sheep, cow. I don't know how I... So retarded. Okay, so I saw a mini burrata in its own container, so I bought it. So burrata is like mozzarella filled with a creamy, loose ricotta. So we'll, we'll do a close-up when we cut it open and let its guts out. Stinky. So this one is a creamy cow's milk cheese that has been long aged, very smelly. It's almost like a triple cream brie with some extra stank. Can you give this a little... Definitely doesn't feel like a bag of sand. It feels like a bag of sand when you're touching it. <laughs> and then last, but certainly not least, a Gouda from Holland. Triple H. I would have put on my clogs if I had more time. If I knew you were coming over and we were gonna do all this, then I would have put my clogs on, but. So we're gonna wanna do something sweet with something that's really unctuous. So this is sweet. So yeah, those would be a great pairing. We still have to place a little bit more cheese. Farmer's cheese. So why don't we do the farmer's cheese we were going to do with the radishes. Ooh, yeah. Oh, wow. Let's go. We opened it up a little bit. Encourages guests to eat it like it's already been messed up. Trick of the trade. We're making headway. All right, so next up, fresh fruits. Start with what's in season. We got some really beautiful tangerines, French breakfast radishes, raspberries, blackberries. I was thinking cute ass radishes, 100%. Frame this guy. 
and you really kind of don't want to leave open spaces. The closer you can get everything, the more bountiful you make it look. The tangerines I figure we'll place last because we wouldn't want those to get covered up. You see an opportunity to take it. I just think it needs this color. Definitely needs color. I just cut one lemon in half. I squeezed it with my press, filled the rest with water, and this is just one pear sliced. The acid in the pear is going to keep this from turning brown. So there's nothing more disgusting than a brown apple or brown pear, right? And you want it to look pretty. You don't you want, want it to be brown. Look pretty. You want to be impressive. You're a post with the most. No brown apples here. She knows the restaurant tricks. Oh, you know what we can do? Is we can put it like literally on top. Let's move on to nuts, because I am nuts. <laughs> so today we have Marcona almonds, which are divine. If you haven't had them, stop what you're doing and go get them. Yeah. The nut in me recognizes the nut in you. Namaste. <laughs> All right, I think we should go in with our olives. Olives, Marcona, bread, we're done. My <laughs> dear favorites. Oh my god. The one, the only. only. What do you got there? Castle Vistrano olive. Their nickname is literally butter olive. This is the segue olive from I don't like olives to I like olives. Okay, so a couple more items. Money Oh, we're moving on. We're moving on. A couple more things. Next, we got the things to eat a little accoutrement on. So we got the baguette from Sadie Rose Bakery. Super delicious sourdough. You gotta have something to put all your gooeys on. So we have a cracker with a dried fig and then a gorgonzola cracker. In case that's your fancy. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> we have more berries. Let's like berry out the, the berry spots. Berry me. <laughs> the opposite of berry me. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh shit. We're losing spots here. This is bomb now. This might be the prettiest potter I've ever made. And the last but not the least, grand finale. Edible flowers. It's natural garnish and it feels fancy. Cheers. Good job. To another excellent preparation. Best co-pilot ever. Yeah. Is that what you call it when you cook with people? <laughs> All right, so we've done it. We want to see what kind of charcuterie you like, what kind of cheese you like. Yep. If you have any questions, Leave them below. Holla at us. Manja, manja. We want to know. So, Michaela tells me she has a secret spot on the beach, which happens to be a very famous surf spot called Termaline. And there's a staircase to go down. And we had to walk on all of these rocks. In my defense, I sent her the location. She's a surfer. I never looked. Couldn't she know? So I think it's time we should just like probably enjoy this. And the surf does look pretty fun. Oh. Thank you.